side and so, it's exhausted and they're working. So, so I believe this is the wording. Oh, I put up here. Then move, okay, let's see. So we did have an amendment on the floor as we seconded to add four minutes to the total debate. Six, sorry, we seconded to add six minutes to the total debate time. All those in favor of attending the debate, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed. Thank you, the ayes have it. Three times extended by six minutes, three on each side. And you should look at what's on the screen to see if it's what the amendment is. <coughs> Things that are intended to intentionally monetized. 
And yes, we, we do want to exclude things that are being done primarily for monetized purposes. Okay. We have five seconds left for. Parliamentary inquiry. Sure. Uh, does, does that constitution already provide definitions of bans, uh, professional, semi professional, and bans? Don't they relate to No. They're specific to categories. There's no over on the four. So the time has expired. I yield to those against. Those expired. The time has expired on the, the uh, side in favor. Anybody who wish to speak against this amendment by substitution? to a vote on the amendment by substitution unless somebody wishes to move to extend debate time here further. Move two yes. minutes. How many? Two minutes. Two minutes. Is there a second? Second. Okay, move and second to extend debate time by two minutes. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. The day is happening. Okay. Well, two thirds in favor. So we'll now vote on the amendment by substitution. Those in favor of replacing the original proposed constitutional amendment by the version on the screen, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. The ayes have it. The debate time has expired. We now are on the main question of whether or not to approve this as a constitutional amendment, which would, if approved, would then come up for ratification next year. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I don't think it's going to pass, but I agree with you at, let's see, four minutes of debate time on this version, whether we should adopt it or not. Is, is, it, uh, is there a second for the? Second. It's been moved and seconded to extend debate time by four minutes. So those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. The less than two thirds in favor. The time is not extended. That is a brief pause for the secretary to catch up.
election will be fairly simple because we have three slots and we have three nominees and there's no, uh, the, uh, there is still the zone restrictions in effect because that the elimination of that part of the Constitution does not take effect until the end of this World Cup. However, uh, there was a deadline of 5 p.m. yesterday for nominees to file paperwork saying they agreed to, to be nominated. And that deadline is passed, so there will only be these three nominees. So perhaps somebody can make a motion that we get uh, done. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Is there any objection? It's on the screen. Is there any objection to electing these by acclamation? Hearing none, they are uh, uh, So Dave McCarty and Linda Benaroff are elected by acclamation. Uh, John Coxon is elected, and Warren Buff uh, is previously serving as withdrawn reps. Uh, we applause for his contribution to all of you. The signing list. The signing list. Where are the signing list? Right there up front. Back. There's one in front. There's one in back. back.
Dave McCarty. Um, perhaps it's just my cranky nature, um, but some ideas are just on their face dumb, and the people who think that I got one nomination, I'm the nominee, and that's valid, are the frankly just ill-informed and dumb, and I refuse to yield to stupid people. <laughs> you yield to Mark. <laughs> submitted nominee. So even somebody who's been part of the society for some time can make that mistake. I think clarifying this is a good idea. Time in favor of the expire. Uh, speech against. Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those uh, in favor of this constitutional amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The ayes have it. And this will come up for ratification next year and successful. Uh, next item arising from a committee report, uh, 3.2.1, in the on page 18 of the agenda, and in the version reported by the committee in the new handout for today, uh, on page 3, the Selling Votes Committee reported, this version would have a very slight change.
Okay, proceeding uh, next item, then this is uh, 3.2.1. Uh, this is the, the report of the, uh, some of those committees reported a uh, <coughs> substitution, which actually, I believe, changes only one word. Is that true? <laughs> changes four words, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, and we had set to a time limit for eight minutes, so um, I guess the chair of the committee would like to. We do understand that there was some confusion uh, with the original wording. We believe that our minor tweaks have cleared this up and moved the reference to 4.2.1 and making it generally 4.2 because there's also text in 4.2.2 which matters to us. Uh, we believe that, clear, that clearing that up makes it absolutely clear which supporting membership rate we're talking about. Uh, however, we did not say that they shall not provide one because we want World Cons to still be able to give their guests of honor voting rights. Because if we're making someone a guest of honor, we do think they're an important part of the community. At least that's the theory. I'll yield for a question. He's asking if this, in, if this is intended only for guests of honor, and or if, or if conventions may give other memberships including voting rights, and we have left it as an option to them that they may uh, at their discretion. However, if they were giving away voting rights willy-nilly, they would probably attract the ire of the society. Another question? Do you have another question? I'll yield for another question. Do we have reports of committees that have been discounting memberships in the past, or is this a problem that really doesn't that, exist? That, that's debate. Right? That, that's full on debate. Uh, sorry. sorry. No, I'm asking you, do we have Right, that, that's what I mean. The question is on the meaning of the motion or from it. It's not, that's not a question of the meaning well, of the motion. Well, I'd like to yield the floor and let you come up and debate. Uh, if you wish to, is there a speech against? Oh, that's, you yeah, uh, Speech against? I have a chair. Uh, typo. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I apologize as the as the secretary of the Seven Wispa Samurai uh, that that worked on this yesterday afternoon. I believe we're missing a word in the middle line of it. It should say Wispa's voting rights were less than the cost of the supporting membership. I ask unanimous consent to correct that. Is there any objection? Hearing none. So this is corrected by inserting. The word B between that and cost of the second line of the version reported by the committee. Yeah. Yep. Um, does uh, tremendous pay for the Does that mean just rights to not receive what is needed, or other rights to receive? Sign selection email in the business meeting. Uh, and maybe someday ratification of constitutional amendments. Um, yes. Chair, point of order, as we now have additional noise, every effort to, for clarity in speech is, is requested. Okay, apparently the level of background noise has increased in the vicinity of the uh, where it's being recorded, so people should be extra careful to be clear and uh, audible. Uh, so we look for speech against this constitutional... Okay, well, actually what we have is... Uh, this is an amendment by substitution. Is there any objection to just replacing the uh, version of the uh, original agenda with the amendment by substitution reported back by the committee? It just has a few words tweaked for clarity. Seeing no objection, uh, we've replaced the version of the agenda with the version reported by the committee with the one word typo fix. And uh, we've had a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I've had it pointed out to me that WISFIS does sanction one other convention that under limited circumstances does have a membership right. Uh, some of you may not be aware of this because it doesn't happen very often, but the NASFIC, which is one of our conventions, and as long as it is one of our conventions, we should stop ignoring it. Um, NASFICs can, under limited circumstances, select NASFICs. And that would be a voting right. And I believe we should generalize this rule and would suggest that we uh, change the title to, uh, to strike the word WISFUS from the title, just to say membership types and rights. 
and to uh, replace the word Worldcon, and then they would actually change the wording of it so that it would say that no convention committee shall sell a membership that contains any voting, uh, any convention voting rights for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by section 4.2 in the selection of that convention. And I move that as an amendment. And I actually am going to ask unanimous consent that we modify it that way. Okay, then I move the amendment then. Okay, I, I believe the titles have no significance, so uh, the change to delete wizards from the title <coughs> is uh, frivolous. That's what the deleting, so it would change if we would get to say, uh, no committee shall sell a membership that includes any voting rights for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by section 4.2. Okay. In the selection well, that's of okay. that, it, well, okay, I mean, it doesn't matter that much. The key element is the word world cons need to change to, to convention in the relevant portions to generalize the word. So the, the, the first and last occurrence of, the, there are two occurrences of world cons, the last one also needs to change to convention. Conven to convention. Convention, okay. Yeah. No, conven no convention committee shall sell a membership that, that includes any WISPAS voting right for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by section 4.2 in the selection of that convention. Okay, so in that case, I can once again ask unanimous consent. Okay. I ask unanimous consent that we modify the motion on the floor so that it would read, no convention committee shall sell a membership that includes any WISPAS voting rights for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by section 4.2 in the selection of that convention. Effectively, it just strikes out WorldCon and inserts convention so that it applies to all WISPAS conventions. I have a question. Uh, I guess I'll give, well, first of all, is, uh, in that case, I guess it's the unanimous consent is not given and the motion the you Yeah, well, uh, is there a second? Okay. Okay. So yeah. um, I will yield for questions then. Okay. I'll uh, yield for the first question there from Steve. Uh, for the selection of this convention, does that mean that if the different supporting rights for an aspect and the Worldcon, then they, they both could have different rights. Well, this applies to the selection of that of that convention. Whatever yeah. voting fee applied to the selection of that convention. If it was a NASPIC, it would be the voting fee associated with the selection of that NASPIC. Right. If it was a Worldcon, it would be the voting fee associated with the selection of that Worldcon. Yeah. Yeah. I yield for a question here. If the sections about NASPIC say that it's uh, selected in the same way as the Worldcon. I have no objection to including that. If no one, if, if this, at that point we are suspending the rules to add it, there's a. It was pointed out that it probably should be 4.2 and and 4.8 to be consistent with cross references. Indeed, actually, why don't we just say section four? Okay. Article, article four. <laughs> or article four. Ar yes, you're right, stylistically. Article four. This is why we don't do this stuff on the floor that often, guys. All right, were there any other people trying to ask me questions? Uh, the proposal is to uh, substitute then uh, no convention committee shall sell a membership that includes any WISPAS voting right for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by Article 4 in the selection of that convention. And I've probably used up my side's entire debate time. Right, you certainly have. So, so there were, yeah. I've run out of time. What's your question? So, I believe that uh, we, we decided there were, that this amendment was on the floor, uh, and the speech time in favor of the amendment has expired. So, the question is, is there any speech against the amendment that is to say against this change in wording? So, um, whilst I understand the idea of rule things change, um, I'm concerned about potential side effects 
So, for instance, if we were to revisit and uh, pass the voting rights for Mastic uh, in the future, you could have a position where you had a 20, as they say, a $40 supporting fee for WorldCom and a $20 supporting fee for Mastic, and suddenly all the people who want to vote in the Hugos can buy $20 Hugo <coughs> voting rights. I, I prefer the simpler version that we had before. So, are there any further debate, any further speeches against the amendment? <coughs> Seeing no further speeches against the amendment, we will vote on the amendment. This is the change in wording. Uh, all those in favor of this change, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. The ayes have it, and the wording is so changed. So, uh, since we have been... So the, the time for the affirmative is expired. There's about 50 seconds left uh, against. Does anybody wish to speak against the constitutional amendment uh, as changed? So, Josh, this, um, um, this amendment would um, prohibit Worldcons from offering uh, limited, um, unwaged and other uh, poverty-associated um, memberships with, with full voting rights, and therefore I, um, I oppose it. Are there any further speeches against? Uh, no. Never mind. Any further speeches against? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote on this tweaked and amended and substituted uh, thing here. So, uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed. Thank you, the ayes have it, and uh, this will go up for ratification if it's asked one. Uh, I don't believe there's anything else, I don't believe there's anything else arising out of the uh, Wistless or Business Meeting Committees. <coughs> uh, are there any issues arising out of the World Kind of Master Financial Reports? Um, yesterday, during uh, the financial reports, I was asked about a spot called Holding Spot on Saskatchewan's financial report. Um, I got in contact with our treasurer, Bruce Farr, and um, our uh, uh, bookkeeper, Lisa Goicherigan. And what that is, is that we get bulk uh, transfers of money from uh, PayPal and from Square and they have to be matched up with the appropriate memberships, right? And so, well, until the secretary, or until the bookkeeper has time to do that, she puts the, those bulk monies in there and then later distributes them to their appropriate categories. So it's just an accounting holding spot for that. Uh, the memberships are all, of course, recorded by the register system, that's all fine. It's just a matter of precisely accounting, oh, this much went to attending memberships, this much went to supporting memberships, why the questions about that, or is that clear? Yes, thank you, Len. Any further matters rising from the Volk on NASA financial reports? <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I didn't believe Mr. Pomerantz is here today, but yes, yeah, yeah, I am. Okay, well, I'm assuming.
assuming John, you wish to still ask the question. <laughs> I, I, I had my thank you. Will you yield? I will happily yield to you, Mr. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
this point, uh, it, it would appear so. Um, but until the donations have actually been paid, I wouldn't like to, I wouldn't like to commit myself to that. Uh, people have promised that they will pay the remaining money, but that simply remains a promise at this point. Okay, thank you.
Uh, I don't think this has necessarily been scheduled explicitly by programming for this convention, and therefore there hasn't necessarily been good outreach to former Worldcon chairs. Many of you are here in this room. Uh, could you please make an effort to contact the other former Worldcon chairs? And there will be an item in the newsletter if they read the newsletter, but shortly after the adjournment of the main business meeting in this room, it should be the opportunity for the Worldcon chair. Site selection stands at the conclusion of the site selection business meeting. Shortly thereafter, as soon as we can or get it organized, will be the Worldcon chair's photo opportunity right here. And it would be before the MDC meeting. We have to get the photo op out of the way and then we'll deal with the MDC meeting. So yes, go and go forth and, and contact those former chairs as well and make sure they know. Thank you. Uh, any additional announcements or queries? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is kind of a parliamentary question in a way. Thank you. Um, uh, as mentioned yesterday, I'm the former chairman of the European Science Fiction Society, but it's got nothing to do with that. Now, um, <clears throat> what I'm asking about is most countries which have an active science fiction community also have a national science fiction convention, a NATCON, a NATFSCON, or whatever you call it. <coughs> Under the WSFS rules, North America, as far as I know, is defined as everything north of Mexico, right up to the North Pole. Am I correct or am I open to it? All of North America. All of North America. All of America. Even though it says North America. Excuse me. There isn't an official definition of North America as such, but the former regional definitions really constitute that, and, and they make it clear that that all of Canada, U.S., Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, and Central America are all considered to be part of North America. So, so basically, Hawaii, yeah, Alaska, etc. Everything North, North America with the islands and so on, right? Yes, but not anything south of North America. Uh, south, south of Mexico is not considered. So Honduras. You know, Correct. 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 But the main intention is, to my knowledge, and I'm open to correction here. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Chairman. To my knowledge, and I'm open to correction here, there is no major activity in Mexico. Canada has its own national science fiction convention, as far as I know. And there's the major country which has an off of science fiction activity, but doesn't have a national science fiction convention. And that country is the United States of America, its territories and possessions. And therefore, I think it should be considered but the NASFIC term ought to be changed to USFIC, United States Science Fiction Convention. And that is something I'd like to leave with everybody to think about. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay, are there other announcements or questions? Yeah. Do you want me to leave the floor? I'm happy to do so, having thrown that spanner in. <laughs> Against the United States, so nothing whatsoever. Uh, an actual point uh, to what Kevin said earlier for the former Worldcon chairman in the room. You all, if you haven't already picked it up, have a packet at Program Participant Pickup that has a little notice reminding you that there is a photo opportunity here, as well as certain other things that former Worldcon chairmen generally look for, like beer. <laughs> <laughs> Any further announcements or questions? Okay, to remind people that there are member business meeting attendee ribbons at the front table. Would people bring the attendance lists up to the front table? But unless there's some other item. I move to adjourn. I hear, hearing no other business.